In the last video, we looked at creating and running a macro, and I mentioned there was a more streamlined way of running the macros, and that's what we're going to look at now. How to assign the macro to a keyboard shortcut or to an icon on your toolbar. So we'll look at the keyboard shortcut first, and we'll go through the process of actually creating a macro again at the same time. So we'll go to do Tools, Macro, Record a Macro. I'm going to call this um, Bradley, and you'll understand why in a second. So we're giving it our name. I'm now going to use this option here of assigning it to a keyboard shortcut. So I'll click on the button, and basically in this box here, press new shortcut key, I just press on the keyboard the buttons that I want to assign the macro to. And I'm going to use Control shift b just be aware that there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts already in use in Word, um, and it might come up and say there's a conflict, and it will ask you whether or not it wants you to use that or not, and it's your choice. So there's the keys that I pressed on my keyboard, Control, Shift, and B. Remember where you want to assign it to. I don't want to assign it to the template. I want to assign it to this document. And then we click Assign and close that dialog box. And then we're recording the macro now. So I'm just going to go through the process of recording the macro in the usual way. And I'm just going to change the font style to the Bradley hand. See the name, Bradley? And I'll change the font size as well. OK, so we can see the effects of that. We'll stop the macro. Just to show you that it's there, if I go into Tools and Macros, and there you can see my macro, and of course I can run it in the normal way. But I want to use the keyboard shortcut, so I'll select my words, hold down the Control, Shift, and B command, and it changes the font style. Okay, so that's running the macro using the keyboard shortcut. It was Tools, Macro, and when we record the macro, it's remembering to use the keyboard to assign it to. So that was looking at adding a macro to a keyboard shortcut. The next step is to add one to one of the icons on your toolbar, or actually to create an icon on the toolbar, or a button on the toolbar. And this is the process. We create the macro in much the same way. Tools, Macro, Record the Macro. We give it a name, just in the same way we tell it where to store the macro. And then this time, we're going to use Toolbar. So we click on the Toolbar button. There's the macro that we're going to create. Now, the basic process is that we click and drag this and drop it anywhere on any toolbar that's currently available. If the toolbar you want is not available there, we can switch to the Toolbars tab and switch on any of the toolbars that we like. We can also create our own new toolbar. I just call this Ron's Macros. And again, tell it where to save it. There's my new toolbar. So I'll just switch back to the commands. There's my macro. So I can now click and drag this macro onto any of the toolbars or onto my new toolbar. Now that doesn't look very pleasing, does it? So we need to be able to modify that. We do modify selection. Just make that a little bit easier for you to see. Modify selection. The first thing is we can change the name. And you can see, oops, click back into that, that on my toolbar, the name has now changed to reflect what I've typed into this box. We can also give this um, an image. So we can do change button image and choose one of the images that are there available for you. And again, it puts that on your button modify selection again. 
We can also do things like edit the button image, where we can actually modify the pictures that are already there. You can just about see that effect in that button. So just to recap, what we did is we clicked and drag the, but the command onto one of the toolbars. Once we'd done that, then we modified the selection to make it appear how we want it to appear. Once we close that, we're back in. You can see my cursor. We're back in to, modif to recording the macro in the normal way. I haven't got any text selected, so I'll just pause my recording, select my text, start my recording, make the changes that I want to make, stop the recording. Now, to use that macro, quite simply, select the text and click on your button. Select your text and click on your button. Very simple, very easy. Just while we're on working with these buttons, if I go back into um, customize the toolbars, you can actually work with any of these buttons at any time. If you select a button, then you can modify the details to do with that button. Some of them are protected, some of them you can, some of them you can't. There's my Bradley one again, I can go back and make modifications. And also to remove um, a button, you can just click and drag it, and you can see the cursor changed to a cross. That will remove the button from the toolbar. So a little bit of working with toolbars there. Uh, for the purpose of this qualification, all you need is to be able to add to a standard toolbar. You don't need to create your own toolbars.